My name is Elias Logan. I'm an expert and dealer of authentic ancient Greek, Roman, biblical, Byzantine coins and artifacts. I run a website called trustedcoins.com. There you have access to over 6,800 items, all available for sale. Let me show you a little bit of what you get with every item that you buy. Every item that I sell comes complete with a beautiful certificate of authenticity. This certificate of authenticity gives you a lifetime guarantee of authenticity on the item that you purchased. Plus my signature, I've identified over 28,000 authentic ancient coins and artifacts over the years. The coin specifically comes in a beautiful numismatic coin flip. The coin flip allows you to look at the front of the coin and the back of the coin without taking it out of the protective covering. And there's a shortened description here that matches the number on the certificate, a unique number. The description is professionally done, many times citing a major numismatic reference or collection. And in the back you get the historical context of the item that you have purchased. So let's say if you want to save this as a gift for yourself or others, this makes a beautiful presentation piece because it shows all the details. What's also interesting is that most people just don't know that ancient coins are available for sale, so you may want to see this as a, a great investment opportunity as I do. So you might want to visit my site Trusted Coins. Today I'm going to be talking about ancient Greece. Ancient Greece, the, this coin for example, the, this is just one of the coins, one of the numerous amounts of coins that I have. It's a Philip II. Philip II was the king of Macedon. It fe features a youth riding a horse. This is uh, to celebrate his Olympic Games victory in horse racing in uh, ancient Greece. So now for the history of, yeah, you may want to check out my, my numerous ancient Greek coins that are available in my store. Now let's start for ancient Greece and get a little bit of history about it. Ancient Greece was a civilization belonging to a period of Greek history that lasted from the Archaic period of the 8th to 6th centuries BC to the end of antiquity, about 600 AD. Immediately following this period was the beginning of the early Middle Ages and Byzantine era. A mercantile class rose in the first half of the century BC, shown by the introduction of coinage is about 680 BC. This seems to have uh, this seems to have introduced tension to many city states. The aristocratic regimes were generally governed. The polis were threatened by the newfound wealth of merchants, who in turn desired political power. From 650 BC onwards, the aristocracies had to fight not to be overthrown and replaced by populist tyrants. A growing population and a shortage of lands also seems to have created an internal strife between the poor and the rich in many city-states. Well, Athens suffered a land and agrarian crisis in the late 7th century BC, again resulting in civil strife. By the 6th century BC, several cities had emerged as dominant in Greek affairs. Athens, Sparta, Corinth, and Thebes. Each of them had brought the surrounding rural areas and smaller towns under their control, and Athens and Corinth had become major maritime and mercantile powers as well. Rapidly increasing in a population in the 8th and 7th centuries BC had resulted in emigration of many Greek, uh, Greeks to form colonies in Magna Graecia, southern Italy and Sicily, Asia Minor and further afield. The weakened state of the heartland of Greece coincided with the rise of Macedon, led by Philip II, whom we just saw a coin of. In 20 years, Philip had unified his kingdom, expanded it north and west at the expense of Illyrian tribes, and then conquered Thessaly and Thrace. His successes stemmed from his innovative reforms to the Macedon army. Decisively defeating an allied army of Thebes and Athens at the Battle of Charinoia in 338 BC, he became a de facto hegemon of all of Greece except Sparta. He compelled the majority of the city-states to join the League of Corinth, allying them to him and preventing them from warring with each other. Philip then entered into a war against the Achaemenid Empire, but was assassinated by Pausanias of Orestes early in the conflict. Alexander's son and successor of Philip continued the war. Alexander defeated Darius III of Persia and completely destroyed the Achaemenid Empire, annexing it to Macedon and earning himself the epithet the Great. 
When Alexander died in 323 BC, Greek power and influence was at its zenith. The Hellenistic period lasted from 323 BC, which marked the end of the wars of Alexander the Great, to the annexation of Greece by the Roman Republic in 146 BC. Although the establishment of Roman rule did not break the continuity, continuity of Hellenistic society and culture, which remained essentially unchanged until the advent of Christianity, it did mark the end of Greek political independence. The territory of Greece is mountainous, and as a result, ancient Greece consisted of many smaller regions, each with its own dialect, cultural peculiarities, and identity. Regionalism and regional conflicts were a prominent feature of ancient Greece. Cities tended to be located in valleys between mountains or on coastal plains and dominated a certain area around them. Ancient Greece consisted of several hundred more or less independent city-states, polis, which had, which have been petty kingdoms. So visit my site trustedcoins.com for a bunch of Greek coins you could buy. Thank you.